Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part one in what will be a short series of videos detailing the build of the flight seat. In this video we'll look at some of the initial preparation and considerations. Let's buckle up. The overall Simpit project is made up of four main parts. The first three are the left console, the front dash and the right console, which are fully built now. The fourth part to arrive at core project completion is a flight seat. The seat we can see in front of us now was a temporary measure just to have something in place to sit on whilst I was building the other three main parts. And it was literally just an office chair with a slight modification and cutout so it could tuck up close to the flight control stick and a colour of grey just so it would blend in generally as best it could. I also installed a single tactile transducer underneath the chair just so I could get some vibration from the aircraft to feed through it. And I have to say that was to really good effect. We'll just pan round now to get a view of the sim pit and look at the current temporary flight seat in, in that context. Having had the temporary flight seat pretty much from the get-go and from living with that through all the stages of the build of the sim pit over the last few years, it's given me a good amount of time to reflect on what I would want in the permanent flight seat. So what I'm looking for in the final flight seat, we first of all an aesthetic which is far more in keeping with an ACs2 style ejection seat. With that look achieved, I want there to be a high degree of comfort. The seat I have now is, is really uncomfortable after even a short time sitting on it. So there's definitely got to be a good degree of comfort. And then the, there'll be two tactile transducers installed now to have a greater degree of vibration fed through to the seat from the simulation. Something to me that's really important is that it's mounted onto an electronic base that will allow a number of axes to be adjusted. So therefore I could move it forwards and backwards, but also to tilt it backwards and forwards and to alter the height. So that will give me full control over the placement and exact positioning of the seat, which is important not just from a comfort point of view, but line of sight to the instruments. And finally, there'll be some extra controls incorporated around the seat so I can use my shortcuts to tap into other functions within the sim. With all of those factors achieved within the build, I'm not looking and don't need it to be an exact replica of an A10C ejection seat. Whereas for the left and the right console, I designed those frames myself, for the flight seat, my starting point will be to source some good plans online. After a good bit of research online, I decided to go with the plans by Flim from VR Pits. What we can see on screen now is a render of those plans in FreeCAD, and this is part of what's provided with those plans when purchased from Flim. So these plans would likely work very well for someone that wants to jump straight to the machining phase. They might even outsource that to a company that will machine it for them, so they can almost jump to an assembly and it's done. What you also get is a DXF file for all of the cutouts to be machined. They're all nested together, so they could all be machined straight onto a large CNC bed. However, what I'm looking to do is to take these plans as a starting point and adapt them so I can incorporate all of the other features that I want. Although the final design I arrive at will be a massively modified version of the original, because the origins of that original belong to Flim, I've spoken to him in terms of what he's comfortable for me to share. So what's been agreed is that I will show the full breakdown of my adapted design. So I'll be able to share this build in quite some detail 
but without releasing the final plans that I arrive at and any fine detail relating to scaling and measurements. So the next step was to source an electronic car seat base. My first thoughts were, shall I get it as a base which has a, a car seat already on? Or should I get it just as a base on its own? And I went for the latter from the point of view that I wanted to be sure that I could see that the profile was both flat as possible, both on the top and the bottom. And that means that it will be far easier to mount the base itself to the floor, but then also to mount the actual flight seat onto it. This was something I took quite some time to look at closely. It also meant I could look more closely at the condition and quality of the electronic base. And rather than get a used car seat and a used with all the used motors and base underneath, I was looking for something ideally that is a um, new unused item of stock, uh, which I could get at a good price. And that way I know I could get it in perfect condition. Because what I wouldn't want to do, because it would be so bespoke, is to build this and then you encounter some problems with the motors and it's not as simple as you can just easily switch it and swap it with another car seat base. And in looking at photos online of some of the ones for sale was trying to look at some good close-up pictures of the motors so I could judge in advance before getting it that I can see a really high likelihood that I can easily interface into those motors and get them working in the way that I want. So what I arrived at is what we can see on screen now. This is a close-up picture of the car seat base. It's from a Range Rover model L405. This is a vehicle manufactured by Jaguar Land Rover. I actually got this off eBay and it was £50 plus £10 P&P, so £60 all in. And it's in absolute perfect condition, brand new, unused stock. We can see a picture of the underneath of that now, and we can see some of the motors, but also that the profile of it, as I wanted, is fairly flat, both top and bottom. So the next step is to do some tests on the motors and get those up and running. So I'll take this round to my father-in-law's workshop and we can have a look at it together to look at the best way to drive the motors. So we run a multimeter over the various connectors of the motors and hook it up to a bench supply. Each of the motors has a number of connectors and in identifying the ones that drive the actual motor itself we can connect 12 volt supply to that. And it is as simple as when the connectors are on one way it drives the motor in one direction, you swap over the connector to reverse the polarity and it drives it the opposite way. So fortunately fully working and very easy to drive. In looking closely at the profile for when this was mounted into the Range Rover, there's a number of these metal pegs underneath that were there for alignment. So just took a bit of time now to start cutting those away to give it a completely flat profile. Here's one of the ones where it's been removed. So that will now be as simple as attaching that to a wooden base just with a bolt, a nut and bolt. And here's the one we've cut away. So I'll start now to run a series of tests to understand the full range of motion across the three axes that it has. So I'll just connect some power now so we can look at the forward and back movement. So this one has really quite a good range of movement here, which is good because I want the seat to be able to be moved fully back as I step out of the sim pit, and equally as I then step in to move it right up against the flight control stick. So let's reverse the polarity now, and we'll move it backwards. Ultimately, I will have a small enclosure that will contain three motor controllers and then switches interface into that. And ultimately, some kind of careful placement and protective covering of the wire. So 
during the movement of the seat, it, they can't ever get caught. And we'll have a look at the other axis as well. So we've got height adjust here. And we can see from the spirit level now, the, the, the extent to which the angle's impacted. The other axis that this base has is tilt. And as would be expected, the tilt has a huge impact on the angle of the seat. But interestingly, as we can see now, the height also affects the angle. And when you combine the height and the tilt, they together create new angles that the seat's at. And part of understanding all of this is to allow me to design an adapter plate, a wooden adapter plate that will be mounted onto the base and get it to sit at a core angle. So the point I'm at now at the end of that preparation is I'm clear on the scope of the build that the seat we see in the middle of the screen now, which I've used to this point, the new version will have a better aesthetic, be more comfortable, it'll have two tactile transducers, be mounted in an electronic base and it'll have extra controls. The task before me now is to take Flim's plans that we can see a render of in the bottom right of the screen and adapt that design so it marries up to the electronic base that we can see in the bottom left of the screen. It'll be this adapted design which I'll share in some detail in the next video. Thanks for watching.